What's going on guys? Welcome to Boundless, a game that has pretty much no boundaries. That's kind of why it's called Boundless. You can explore, build, craft, hunt, trade, collaborate with other players. It is a voxel-based game and it is kind of got some similarities to something like Minecraft. Uh, so we're going to jump on in, just give it a try, see what it's all about and kind of get an idea of what the game is. Just a quick first impressions video to tell you and show you about the first 30 minutes of the game. And of course, if you guys want to see more, please just let me know and I'll be sure to show you more. So we're going to choose our head. Uh, oh God. Not really great. I like the little slick back look. There we go. Eye tint. There's 255 eye tints. We're going to go blue. How about that? All right. So now we can edit our body, male or female. We're going to stay male. Character scale. I want to be a big guy. Actually, let's be a tiny guy. I'm down for a tiny guy. And then there's a whole bunch of color tints as well. I'm more of a red person, but at the same time, I kind of like that gray that we had. That's a nice one. And our character name. Royal? Hey. So nobody actually took Royal. Import my Steam friend's characters. Sure. Continue. Find a start world or start near a friend. Select a friend's character to start near. We're just going to find a start world in the U.S. of A. Start on a tranquil world? Uh... Creature. We're going to start on a tranquil world just to get an idea of what's kind of going on here. So, got some torches. Yeah, very, very reminiscent of how Minecraft works. So we got a little bit of a tutorial to show. Hi. Hello there. Oh, okay, so it just gave me those things. Whoa, here's our inventory. We have a warp augment and a totem. So on our left hand, we now have a totem we can punch stuff with. In the inventory screen, pick up the warp augment and drop it in the totem to combine them. Okay, so it's like a crafting thing. Oh, there we go. Alright, so now we have a, a new totem. Selecting warp destination. Orbiting above our unknown worlds ready for exploration. Look at the world above you, then hold left click to jettison the warp augment and set the landing site. Warp augments are one-shot items destroyed on impact. Press B to view where other citizens have been settled. Okay, so these are all other players on US East that are settled. So this area is very, very well populated. It seems like somebody else has built a base there. Somebody's built a base there. So you can see the kind of the large scale of this game. I'm going to go like there. Right? And that kind of where I want to go? Landing site. There we go. We chose. Uh, hold the totem and press B to toggle the beacon. That's where we're going to go. The speedy answer traveling to the known worlds obtained through the craft of trade warp. Press E to interact with it and activate the warp chosen. All right, I want to go there. You gonna you gonna let me go there? I don't get it. Blocks are used to build warp conduits like those in the Sanctum. Okay. Oh, so Dragast also has his little world going on here, and this are all his different characters and stuff. Cool. Cool. Press E to interact. Locations. We'll go to our landing site and open the warp. And then, are we gonna just jump in? Break blocks to open. Whoa! That's pretty sweet. All right, so this is where we're walking into our world. Whoa. Okay. So this is uh, this is where we chose to land. Look at the water. Wow. Okay. A lot more stunning than Minecraft, I would go off and say. Press B to toggle the beacon plot visibility. Builder mode allows you to view plot outlines to see which areas have, uh, have and have not been plotted. Plots are black outlines. All right. Oh, wait, someone lives here. Someone lives here. Spitter. Okay. So somebody built this house? Whoa. Look at this place. Oh, we can actually go inside as well. Owned by Dizzy. Dizzy's home. So this is a restricted area. It's not going to allow us to do anything here because this is somebody else's home. Look at all these storage blocks. It actually shows the items that are in them. That's pretty cool, and I don't know what the heck's going on here, but things are happening there. Their door's unlocked, but that's fine. You cannot alter this area. Okay. Not bad. So, in here, I guess we have our journal, which is setting up camp, a tutorial objective. Warping your way into the new beginning leaves you open dangers of the world. Here you need to claim... Land to protect your items both found and made from other citizens and the world regeneration. A campfire is essential, albeit temporary. 
solution to securing your place in the world. To place your first campfire, you need to visit an exchange in the main menu to gain plots. Exchange. Collect. Okay. Is this going to give us plots? Okay, give us a bit of coin. Some cubits. And some XP. Plots. Okay, so then we spend our cubits on plots. So we're going to just buy the one that we can buy. Cubits. So there's a whole economy going on with this game as well. Which is pretty nuts, I'm not going to lie. Strike tree uses, uh, strike trees are your totem, they're releasing collect tree trunks, wheel up and wheel down to cycle between your equipped items. Oh, I see. Okay, so let's hit some trees, shall we? And I'm assuming we can craft tools and stuff down the line. Cool. Alright. This is kind of awesome. I mean, there's a lot to it. It is intimidating. But I'm hoping that we could learn more about the game. And of course, it seems like it, they make it super easy to play with your friends. So we could obviously get some friends in here. It seems like it kind of wants you to play with friends. Gather foliage in your inventory. So it wants us to gather foliage now. There we go. Got three foliage. And four foliage. Nope. It didn't give us that foliage, I guess. We'll get a little bit more. Exotic foliage. There we go. And then handcraft a campfire. Press E for inventory. Um, select handcraft, then choose. Handcraft, and then choose. A campfire. Craft. That's easy enough, right? And then our inventory. Go we'll back to inventory, and we have this. And then we can place it down somewhere to claim a plot of land. But I don't want to live right next to him. So let's not do that yet. I, whoa. Look at this, though. This is cool. I don't know how we're going to cross it, though. <laughs> That's the problem. Let's try to find a nice flat piece of land somewhere to put our first base. It looks like he might have built something down here. Look at this. It's like a road or... Yeah, it's like a, a road or some type of dam or something that they're working on. That's pretty crazy. Look at those over there. I don't even know what the heck those are. Look like pieces of mountain. But how do I even cross this? Like, for real. It is so deep. And we're kind of we're kind of stuck on all sides of it. This is the house we were just visiting, I think, right? Yeah, that's the house we were just in. Um, maybe I can break those blocks and move up them? Or I could just go... Let's just go the other direction. I don't really want to live near this guy, like I said. I kind of want to live somewhere else. There's another river on this side. This dude's got such a defensible position. There's like a cave underwater. I'm not sure what this is. Sedimentary rock. Well, we broke it. I'm hoping that we could somehow maybe break one of these and be able to jump up. There we go. Beautiful. Getting a little bit nicer over here. Nice and flat right here. But I don't really want to be... Still, I still feel a little close to that guy, you know? I don't want to rain in his parade and build right next to him. Ooh, that plot right over there. And look at all these trees here for us. Yeah, that's a good spot. Okay. Oh, and there's a dude right lives right there? That's fine. We'll be his neighbor. We'll be his neighbor. That's fine. I don't think he'll mind a neighbor. Especially a cool neighbor such as me. I'll, I'll bring him tea and stuff. Or bring him sugar for his tea. How about that? All right, my campfire needs to go down now. So we're going to claim this plot of land. Um, campfires temporarily claim an area of land and protect items placed within the outside dangers. Once burnt out, the contents of the campfire become vulnerable to players in the world and regeneration. All right. So we put that down. So this is our camp now within this black circle, it seems like. And we can start getting a little bit more going. Getting crafty. I get it, because we're going to craft some stuff. All right. So B is the plot view. Good good to know. Good to know. Collect an objective reward coffer from the exchange. So we get a reward for doing our objective. So now we collect this, and I think we're going to get more cubits and more coins and some more other items. Cool. And some more XP. All right. And then what we want to do is go to our journal, getting crafty. 
And the more you know, the stronger you grow. Increase your crafting potential and discover the machine crafting with the first crafting table. All right, so we got to get tree trunks, 10 of them specifically. So it wants us to actually craft lumber from the tree trunks. So we go inventory, handcraft, and then luxurious wood lumber. And we craft a whole bunch of them. We got all 10. And then handcraft a crafting table from the timbers. All right, crafting table, craft. Beautiful. And then with that, we will put that on... Where's our crafting table? Here we go. We can put that within our proximity. If we press B, we can check our proximity. Boom, crafting table. E to interact, and now we can craft a whole bunch of tools and items and beacons and furnaces and wow. There's actually a lot to this game, and I can't wait to like go into a city and check it out more. Um, how do we get sticks, though, is the question. Uh, sticks from inventory, timber, handcraft, and trees. I think it's essential for crafting power, so we can craft sticks with that, I'm assuming. So now we can craft sticks with the lumber. Any trunks? No. So we need more trunks. That's fine. So I just realized there's actually a stamina system down low. It regains pretty quickly, so that's nice. Um, what we also need to do is craft some sticks now that we got some more trunks. Sticks. Craft four. We need to craft 12. And we also got our foliage. And now it wants to do a wood axe, wood hammer, wood shovel. Uh, wood. Hammer. Craft. Wood shovel. We need more timber, it seems like. Uh, we probably should have just done our, our wood axe first, I'm assuming. That would have made a little bit more sense. Wait, where did it go? Is it... Oh, it's in the contents? Oh no, we have our wood hammer now. Alright, we'll get a little bit more tree trunks, and then we'll craft our axe, because we're going to need a lot more tree trunks. Because clearly this totem is not going to be the best item for gathering. Pretty much. We also have an XP system, as you saw, we completed those quests. Quests? Quests to get more XP, so. Wood axe, we need two more timber. We have plenty of timber in the area, thankfully. Always gotta build next to the timber. I wonder what the dangerous areas where things will attack you are like. I wonder if we can actually get to one of those areas, or if you kinda play PvE and then eventually join one of those areas, maybe. Let's interact with this. Wood axe. I feel like I have enough timber. Oh, we need to craft the timber. Doi. Here we go. There we go. Now we have enough timber. Wood axe, craft, wood shovel, craft. All right, so now in our inventory, we do have this to put on, not handcraft. It's in our inventory now, right? I thought, ready to craft. Craft or acquire a wood axe. I feel like that's what I did. Contents. Oh, crafted items. Now we gotta move them to our inventory. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory. Getting there. Now they're in our inventory, and now we can equip them to our left hand. Alright. Now we have our axe. Collect objective rewards from the exchange. There we go. Completed some more quests. It's going to give us some more things. Hopefully some cubits so we can start building a house. That'd be nice. Yeah, so I think... Nope, oh, those are just XP. Stone level. So now we start getting to the stone levels. Press tab in your character and then you're going to assign skill points in the skills tab. Really? Character? Core attributes? Life and protection? Combat and effect? Motion? Action? Crafting and forging? Oh. Wow, there's a lot of crazy things that you can do. A base for the long haul. Okay. Use cubits to unlock plots in the exchange. Alright, so we have another plot. They want us to... Uh, you now have your first cubits, an in-game currency, where you can exchange, and you're going to earn cubits every time you level up, even past level 50. Exchange your cubits for two wood plot coffers. Okay, well... I already bought... Oh, wait, so it is two of them. I see now. Okay. Gotcha. We already bought one earlier. Rocks, the tough alternate to wood. Alternative to wood. Found on the side of mountains underground. Break with a hammer for best results. Trapped underground. You can return to the sanctum in the options menu. Okay, so... Let's try to create a little bit of a... Cave system, shall we? This is a shovel, I think. Right? Or is there rocks right there? We have some rocks already sticking out of the ground right here. 
That's an axe. We don't want to use an axe. We use the hammer for underground? Yeah, we do. Okay, so we got some rocks. It wants us to gather 10 rocks and 10 foliage. So I'm assuming with this foliage I'm about to gather, I should be able to create, I guess, this new plot. Craft a beacon control with the crafting table. Okay. Recipes. Beacon. Uh, what? Beacon control? Beacon control. Any timber. So we need to craft some timber first. Craft just a whole bunch of timber. How about that? And then we can craft one of these. And in the contents, we take that out. And uh, I thought I just crafted one of these. But it's not there. It's in the queue. Okay, so it's taking time. Awesome. And then with that, it should go to contents. Okay. There we go. And then with that... We need to put that in an inventory slot and place it down to give ourselves some more room to build, I guess. Let's just place it right there. Yeah, shall we? And then with that there, we can craft to require a basic beacon fuel. Okay. Recipes. Beacon fuel, which requires foliage. Let's get a little bit more foliage. You can also activate these at 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and 6, and 7. You don't have to scroll wheel. One thing I'm just realizing, which is really nice, actually. Actually, we need foliage, right? And with this foliage, we will be able to craft the beacon fuel, which I assume has like an hourly time limit to it, because I know this campfire has like two hours on it. So we'll do some beacon fuel craft. Oh, and it's in the contents. Drag this up, and then go here, and then we fuel it. Boom. Add four weeks of fuel. Four weeks. That's a, that's actually a long time, so we don't have to, like, log in, like, every single day, you know what I mean? So give Beacon a name. Uh, oh, God. What do we name it? Um, how do we even name it? Permissions? Color? Overview? Unname Beacon? Rename Beacon. Uh, Royal Homestead. Confirm. Boom. Collect beacon revenue. Hmm. So it makes money. As your level increases, so does the amount of land plots you can own. A beacon plotter is crafted device for extending your bases using earned land plots. Uh, acquire craft, acquire craft or beacon plotter with the crafting table. Okay. Beacon plotter. And craft. Beautiful. In Q. Eight seconds. And then, uh, so this game is kind of cool. I mean, there's a lot to it. It's really not a pretty simple game. I can tell you that now. Which is kind of crazy. I didn't expect it to be this crazy. It kind of reminds me a lot of Eco. It really does, to a degree. And I'm assuming it's going to get um, a little bit bigger and crazier the more we go on. So we can extend our beacon using the beacon plotter. So how do we do that? Fuel and then use the beacon plotter. Extend your beacon using the beacon plotter. Upsize your beacon base with the beacon plotter. Plots can be added next to your current beacon area. You cannot claim land belonging to or reserved by another player. Plots can be removed using the beaker plot remover. Okay. Can we put these in our, do we put it in our hand? We do. And then we put it here. And then Press slot. Four or four slots to use. So it got a little bit bigger, it seems like. Do we use it here, too? Okay, we did use it there as well. To increase our campfire as well. Axes are best suited for chopping down organic blocks such as wood trunks and foliage. Wow, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Collect the objective reward from the coffer exchange. Oh, we got a whole bunch of rewards that time. The iron feet coffer. So now it's probably going to start helping us learn how to smelt and get some higher tier items and weapons and and probably more cubits in order to extend our plot of land to build even bigger bases and start building. So we're probably going to end there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. But uh, if you want to see me play more, please let me know. Maybe I'll get some friends joining in and we'll do a few different things with them. 
and uh, just kind of get an idea of what this game is all about and play more of it and extend our base and do some cooler things and trade with some people and there's like a whole bunch of other things we can do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and we'll see you guys in the next one.